Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're going to talk about guidance and navigation of a rocket. So let's dive right into it. Now, first, we have to understand what exactly is the problem. The problem is there are no roads or landmarks. The moment you go high altitude enough, as in like, you know, even as a high as like 50, 60 kilometer, you do not know where you are. Now, you can say you can look down, but here's the what if there is cloud? You cannot know reliably. Basically, there are no landmarks in space. And again, while in movies, they do show, oh, moon, you can look at it. But once you actually go there, it's like, OK, that's a tiny, small spec. And like, again, moon itself could be on the other side of your launch mission and you will like, OK, it's useless. So fundamentally, there are no roads, landmarks. And because rocket is not connected to anything, it fundamentally is go, uh, going all alone. Even aircrafts, while they have the almost similar issues, they do have the luxury of being connected to the atmosphere, utilizing at a wind speed and all that. Just they can calculate roughly where they are. If you do not uh, have atmosphere to even guide you like where you are going, you are completely all alone. So this creates an issue. On top of that, it's more or less still same level of issue which you are dealing with when you are talking about aircrafts. However, because of the dynamic forces at play, it's way too uh, convoluted to actually do anything about it. Because uh, think of it this way, a plane has a simple launch profile. You take off from the runway, you uh, cruise at proper altitude and you land. The end. There is no hoo-ha in this. However, the moment you talk about rocket, rockets are like start, go as fast as you can, slow down a little bit because again you are going through max Q, uh, boost back up again, go as fast as possible. Hopefully you are in the correct trajectory, do course correction if you have to and then you you know detach the second stage and second stage has to do the all thing uh, again and again because many times second stage could go too fast and damage the payload. They have to throttle the engine. Like you can easily see uh, some of these call signs called down on uh, basically SpaceX live stream where they're like you know throttling the engine to uh, conserve uh, payload so because of the complexity and dynamic forces at play normal algorithms normal uh, basically rule of thumb simply does not work it's too convoluted so the first and the foremost technology that we utilize is inertial guidance system now this has been utilized as early as v2 era basically this is as old as it gets so fundamentally the benefit of this system is that it knows your orientation without of gravity basically it does not give a damn about uh, so basically you can have a inertial guidance system and that will give you a, a basically world coordinate x y z it will give you a rough coordinate and you're like okay this is the coordinate will this work on mars yes will this work on moon yes this will work as long as the system was powered on now to achieve this old generation system like apollo guidance system what they had a gimbal basically thing that can rotate inside freely without any issue and then they had a spinning gyroscope a very heavy gyroscope and for spinning as fast as possible and they try to reduce as much uh, friction as they uh, can sometimes even fill it up with helium and other things like that nature so they had a spinning gyroscope now benefit of that that puppy will uh, create a horizon lock basically and this lock will not move no matter what so the benefit of that it tells you orientation basically if you start it basically you launch your rocket you know the orientation lock. your rocket goes this way you will know okay uh, my orientation because you have an internal reference this inertial guidance system works from the inside it's not like okay looking out the window it is internally you will know for a fact that your rocket has turned left five degrees right five degrees your pitch uh, roll all that data point can be calculated from the inside reliably so that is amazing thing now be mindful it does not tell you distance it only tells you orientation basically how, uh, where you are going uh, basically which direction you are pointed are you pointed here are you pointed here things of that nature do not expect it to tell you like okay you have traveled five kilometers no it does not tell you that however to add that data point utilize what we call accelerometer now accelerometer tells you one simple thing g forces basically what is the force acting on a rocket ironically rocket is kind of awesome for this simply because rockets does have a high g force so you will have one g that is like absolute zero nothing why because when you, i'm standing here i have one g of acceleration the moment your rocket engine fires it goes to two and it's pushing upwards and you can see easily see rockets can easily achieve five g's and when you're talking about IC bumps they can go as high as like 100 G's so that G force G force with a stopwatch can tell you how far you have traveled again rough estimation but it will tell you like imagine it this way like you are traveling at uh, let's say 10 G and you travel for 10 seconds like your uh, thrust that you are feeling was 10 G force for 10 seconds you know for a rough fact that where you are like you know the orientation you have uh, plotted out the orientation perfectly utilizing the accelerometer you have calculated the acceleration along the point you can have a rough idea at this point in time at this uh, basically deep into the mission and here rough idea you can easily get out of that now 
we used to have spinning gyroscope but you can understand that puppy is big heavy and clunky and uh, we did not want to add even one gram of extra mass when you're talking about rockets having this giant spinning thing is not a good idea so people now utilize what we call ring laser gyro now this puppy is beyond complicated and it does have a motor what we call a dithering motor it's basically vibrates this puppy uh, over you know periodically or in some cases continuously to make sure that it remains in sync yeah it's weird but it does work and all modern systems utilize that even air aircrafts utilize this like when you see the old ball things that like you know people see in aircrafts like you know, it's going up and down that's that's actual gyroscope in old system that was an actual physical spin gyroscope that was attached to a uh, basically level and that's how plane knew where they were so this is step one inertial guidance system and it can utilizing accelerometer can tell you roughly where you are going at what direction then we come to the radio. Now, one thing you have to understand, IGS, if you are uh, familiar with rocket history, you know for a fact that V2 rocket was the first mass produced, actually meant to do something rocket. And it was had idiotically hilarious uh, inaccuracy. But basically, they launched it, hopefully it will go where they want it to go. They had to send so much simply because, again, if it was precise enough, yeah, Britain would have been turned to dust if it was precise enough. It was not precise. So fundamentally problem with that is IGS on paper works amazingly well, but it drifts over time. What does that mean? That simply means if you start a stopwatch and it's like, okay, one minute from launch, how accurate the IGS is, it will give you, let's say, plus minus one uh, meter uh, square. Let's say that's your area. The moment you stop, uh, do the stopwatch thing, let's say two minutes from the launch, you will find that is like, you know, one hundred meters you are drifting and the longer you go on the more it drifts so you can literally reach a point where you are literally instead of landing on this island you are landing in the sea that's how brutal it is and it was a very serious issue with even early aircraft system and people have lost their life simply because of navigational drift issues that happens from igs drift so you cannot launch a rocket relying on the system alone again you can do that but good luck with that so what people utilize is radio now igs is a really good system but it does need second data point to calculate uh, basically remove any error because it does work it is just you have to remove the drift okay now the drift is minus uh, uh, nine degree in this axis okay remove that data point now your data is accurate again so if you have a second uh, point to check it awesome so in early days uh, people utilized two main systems ground based radar system so uh, when apollo mission was being done they had a lot of uh, usa being giant land mass did had the benefit of having a lot of a ground station but they did run another side effect uh, basically apollo supposed to orbit the earth before it did what we call lunar injection bird so they, they would be uh, you know in a position where there is no ground station so they built uh, ships basically and these puppies had enough radio system that they can do all the mission uh, basically all the acts needed for ground control system so they can tell you uh, location uh, location speed all that utilizing basically timing how long it takes and doppler shift now doppler shift is kind of a, a weird things so is like you may think doppler shift only happens galaxies and all that no it happens a normal thing i'm utilizing uh, basically sdr to download image from nova satellites that's also doppler shifting simply because of or velocity so if you have the doppler shift factor it's like okay it's so doppler shifting this much you know the velocity with really high accuracy so these two things allows a feedback loop basically your inertial guidance system tells you you're supposed to be here like but the area is this much the moment you add your radio data it's like okay no now you are inside this uh, basically this corridor you have to be inside this corridor. two data points are telling you that so these are the systems that we utilize in 1969 however uh, modern system do not need these things anymore that's why you don't see any of these ships anymore so we are utilizing what we call gps glonass galileo bindu for 3d location data so this radio system can tell you uh, basically three-dimensional data but it was relying on hundreds of other things also for example radio dish radio dish has this uh, orientation to the earth the dish is mounting in this station but utilizing on that you are calculating the 3d space it was not okay this is your 3d orientation now gps galileo and uh, this sort of system they can directly tell you it's like bro this is where you are and that's why you will always find gps needs at least four satellites to work and uh, galileo and all that they will always need multiple satellites at line of sight to reliably tell you what is your orientation and velocity so radio is the second feedback loop that closes the system it's like no now we know reliably where we are how fast we are going all that data point now all these things are awesome but what do you do once you go outside of range of this uh, global navigation systems uh, basically going to moon or going to mars or any deep space mission you do not you cannot rely on these systems simply because these systems are designed to work inside earth's atmosphere not outside of it so we utilize optical system old school basically so the idea is the moment you exceed earth's atmosphere basically once you are above carbon line roughly say you can see many stars even in daylight and if you have a good camera system like wide angle lens system with a sunset so it does not overload your sensor you can see 
even in daytime where are other big bright stars are because again sun is so powerful it will drown out many dimly lit stars but you can see more than enough where like no this is my celestial sphere orientation basically think of it this there is a sphere around earth where each star is located this is uh, basically orion's belt this is where it's supposed to be it will not move now again is it absolutely hell no but it moves so little like let's say during a mission is like pointless to count for that and you have to wait for 10000 year okay that moved 1 mm so from our vantage point so that's the easiest way to reliably uh, know your location orientation all that jazz uh, when you are in deep space mission deep space mission always rely on satellites uh, many time rely on that and that's why you will see um, basically spacex starlink satellites have a star tracker so optical system uh, works amazingly well so relying on sun and some other bright stars you can know a star map would be made and reliably utilizing that puppy you can know exactly where you are and if you see old movies about uh, apollo missions you will always see the uh, there is a dude who's looking out through something what the heck you are looking out of you are looking out of what you call star uh, basically a window specifically designed for that if your rocket is in the right trajectory or close enough uh, the mission planners would have placed a glass panel with a etching of star map like if the star map is perfectly aligned you know for a fact that you are in right but if it's like a little bit off you can check out your orientation utilizing that puppy so this is very reliable system does work now it does uh, give you another independent data point so think of it as well. something bad happened some electrical fault happened and every system uh, malfunction but this puppy will still work because think of it as well. you are in deep space mission you are as far as let's say pluto every other system malfunction which system you can rely on this puppy it will work no matter what and it does have a basically very low precision basically uh, precision wise it cannot tell you like exactly 5 meters or 10 meters it does not work that but however reliability wise this is got tier reliability this will not be corrupted this cannot be uh, damaged in any way and all icbms ever uh, launched general modern systems they have this as a secondary mission not radio because the first is the moment any uh, war breaks out the first thing any major super war will do is remove out every single space uh, basically infrastructure which is super easy to do so they're like oh U us is launching icbms make sure that all the gps is gone everything is gone that is super easy to do so how will you navigate your icbms they use optical systems then we come to all this data is telling you what uh, where you are but how the heck you know is it correct or wrong basically think of this if i give you a gps data point it does not mean anything without google map now maps are generally inherently designed for two dimensionality so rocket works in three dimensionality so you need what we call corridor data point now corridor is always programmed into the flight computer before launch now, of course, they will plan it out. It's like, okay, this is the launch site. This is how it's supposed to go. I, this is the basically expected trajectory of ISS. This much course question we can do. This much issues we have. Like all that data point, you will create a map. Now, based on that map, that will like have a, uh, like say from computer's point of view, if computer was seeing this rocket launch, it will like, okay, this is a zone where I should be. What happens the moment you go outside the zone? Flight termination system. That's how flight termination system can automatically know, hey, I'm supposed to be inside this zone, quote unquote. This is a green zone. If I'm in the yellow zone, I have like, let's say 10 seconds to go back into the correct zone. If I'm in red zone, go boom now. So that's how it works. So rocket use uh, data is utilizing that to check basically where the heck are you? Basically think of this way, you have compass. Does that mean anything? No, without a compass, other landmarks and a map, you cannot navigate reliably. Same thing, that map data is provided from corridor uh, programming. Now, if the rocket gets out of the corridor, simple issues, boom, event will be triggered. Uh, like uh, in case of space shuttle accident, even though uh, the fuel tank went boom and the shuttle was disconnected, the solid boosters, they were surprisingly intact enough where they were flying away. And uh, basically ground team was like, no, again, right now, they were not outside of the basically safe corridor, but they, they knew for a fact, it's like, what's the point of them flying? And if they had landed, because, well, they are fancy ICBMs at this point in time, they would have caused severe damage. So they had to terminate in mid air. So air disperses a lot of energy. So you will always find like issues like how the heck flight termination system knows or how the heck a rocket knows where they are going or is it in the right track or not? That's all coming from corridor data. Sometimes bad things have happened where people have programmed wrong corridor. Accidents have happened. Sometimes, you know, uh, other issues happened where the data was uh, misinterpreted like a re recently uh, issue with a Russian system where they were sending to ISS and they're like, okay, the emergency ejection system was triggered because of what issue that happened. Issue was happened because somebody installed inertial navigation unit backwards. So basically the data was not apparently reliable enough so something happens so all these data basically from your inertial navigation system your radio system your gps glonass whatever heck you have your optical system all these data is calculated against the corridor if the core every all the data points basically four data points line up perfectly you are good if not go boom 
So this was my presentation on a rough idea, roughly what the heck exactly happens to uh, basically navigate or guide a uh, rocket system. Now, I hope you have enjoyed the system, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.